loop antenna on mid. There is an ICOM 7300 with an old... Uh, Nella Helium e in altre province, le caratteristiche dei brani Boston E sono molto diverse. In alcuni di essi vengono usati molti toni decorativi. Altri ancora sono rilassanti e liberi, adatti a narrare e a esprimere sentimenti. I brani sono spesso caratterizzati da un apparato testuale scarno. Aumentano la tensione della melodia musicale e hanno un immenso fascino. Le composizioni sono descrittive, ruotano intorno al mondo delle trapperie, al cielo azzurro. Hello, these days I came across an old Trio JR500S ham radio receiver that was selling for $50 and I bought it. According to the data I found on the internet, the device was manufactured in 1966 by the company Trio, which after 1986 was known as Kenwood Corporation. At the time it was produced, it was advertised as high performance communication receiver made especially to cover cover the amateur bands between 3.5 and 29.7 MHz. And as always, after the first power up, the receiver did not work even I, threw, I received assurances from the seller that the device was fully functional. In the development of this project, I was helped by PCBWay, which is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturing company in China in field of PCB prototype and fabrication. If you want to make your own PCB for this project or for any other electronic project, PCBWay is a great choice. They have a large online community when where you can find the open source project and you can also share your project there. From my personal experience, I can tell you that on this community, you can find many useful projects with already designed PCBs from uh, where you can place an order directly. Also, you can get 10 PCBs for only $5. So if you want your PCB, just type pcbway.com on your browser. At first glance, the radio is in excellent condition, the interior was full of dust and visually I conclude that it has not been serviced or, mod or modified until now, which is a great sound, sign. Next I de detailed clean it and immediately proceed to find out the problem. After a quick check, according to the circuit diagram that I downloaded from the internet, I discovered that there is no inode voltage on the tubes. After that, I found that this voltage was coming to, the, coming to the remote connector that serves to control the radio via a transmitter. It was then clear to me that the seller had used the radio together with a transmitter. So I connected the anode voltage to the, tube, to the tubes by soldering a jumper as shown in the pictures. The receiver worked immediately and the first sounds were heard on the small speaker that the previous owner has connected to the output. I don't know for what reasons, but the sound was desperately weak. Most likely it's a weakened capacitor, but I will look into that one of these days when I have more time. At this point, it was much more important for me to check the reception characteristics. I instantly installed a cheap 3W Class D amplifier board with bigger speaker. I picked up the signal right after the preamplifier on the 6B M8 tube, specifically after the C35 capacitor. For testing the shortwave area, I will use antenna splitter that I have made before, which is very simple to make and gives excellent results. In one of the following videos, I will describe how to make it.
Also I will use equal conditions antenna for both receivers which in this case is a homemade loop on ground antenna LOG which I made according to the instructions of Matt Roberts immediately after purchasing the radio. I want to say just a few words about this wonderful antenna. My home is located in a less than friendly RF environment surrounded by large buildings on all sides but luckily I have a small yard where I placed 15 feet square antenna right around the trunk of a large tree installed directly on the surface. I still can't believe how good futures has this antenna. First of all the construction time is less than an hour and from the material you need only insulated wire of suitable length. I have installed several type of antennas on my roof included mini whip, long wire antenna with antenna tuner, small loop active antenna but the last LOG antenna is definitely my favorite. The signal to noise ratio is simply amazing. And now let's connect the two radios mentioned in the title and briefly compare the futures. For more reliable results I will try reception in several areas during the day and at night. And finally a short conclusion. Obviously no real comparison can be made considering the one device contains only seven tubes manufactured in the 60s and uh, the other device contains millions of semiconductors and precision crystal oscillator plus modern PC spectrum analysis and control software. The software contains countless options including continuous scanning of the entire shortwave range, step size, demodulation of all types of, types of analog and digital signals, many types of filters, change of AGC parameters, RF, gain control and many many more. On the other hand, the least for me, at least for me, it is a great pleasure to receive signals on the old analog receiver with the precise movement of the knob and the frequency shown on the circular, circular scale located on the certain area, central area, uh, no need for a computer and many settings. It is just, it's just a matter of plugging in antenna and turning the dial. Of course, the reception is significantly weaker 
but it's my great pleasure, great pleasure to have another wonderful retro receiver in my collection. On the other hand, nowadays for a relatively low price you can get such a high-end small receiver whose characteristics are incomparably better than those of the old vacuum tube receivers. In the next period I will try to make a, and connect a pan adapter of this old radio which in a certain way will bring it closer to modern software radios in terms of options. Of course, if I succeed, I will present the results on this channel.